to Cup of Buying today. We are taking your calls, and we have with us on the phone today see Andrea of Oxnard to ask her immigration questions. Hello, Andrea. Nandiyan ka ba? Andito po ako. Kamusta po kayo? Okay naman po. Ano pong tanong nyo para sa ating immigration lawyers? Um, gusto ko lang po itanong kung ang filing po ay February 18. Kailan naman po kaya ang deadline ng um, DACA o ng executive order ni Obama? Okay, so they're asking about the deadline for DACA. Well, there's actually no deadline as far as when you must apply, uh, but there is a it, there is an, a window that will open for DACA, and that is February uh, 18, 2015. So you cannot apply before then, but after that, there's no deadline. So you can file in March or April or June. So as long as you uh, are qualified and eligible, you can continue to apply. If you're qualified for the old, da old DACA, then you can co continue to do that. Okay. And DAPA will be opening up in May, and that's the same thing. So once it opens up, you can file any time after that, and there is no deadline that you have to make in order to receive the benefits. So. All right, but I do encourage people to apply right away. Don't wait for the last minute. Oh, absolutely. All right, our next caller is Mercedes from San Pedro. Mercedes, nandiyan ka ba? Yes, yes, ma'am. I'm here. I'm still here. Ano pong tanong nyo? Uh, ang tanong ko po eh, I'm a green card holder whom I petitioned my kids uh, 2010 uh, as an uh, adult, 21 years old, single. And my question is, uh, could I already uh, apply for a U.S. citizen because I'm already qualified to apply as a U.S. citizen? And will that affect my petition for my two kids in the Philippines who were uh, already 27 and 28, uh, will that affect if I uh, uh, already applied for a U.S. citizenship now? Well, this is actually exactly what we were talking about at the opening of the show, and that is that uh, there's really no detriment to applying for U.S. citizenship at this point. Um, your, your children will be able to retain the F2B uh, category if that's more beneficial to them. At this point, it's more beneficial for them to be in the F1, which is the, the unmarried children of a U.S. citizen. So it's actually beneficial for them if you become a U.S. citizen. So either way, it's not going to harm those petitions in any way, and it's going to give you the ability to vote and to do whatever else you need to do as a U.S. citizen. So I don't think holding off at this point really makes sense. Okay, but does that mean that they have to refile again all that the documents and paperwork for the children? Oh no, absolutely not. The, the petition will automatically, upon you becoming a U.S. citizen, the petition automatically moves to the F1 category. Okay. And then you can opt to stay into the F2B category. But so, would you recommend that or not? Well, I, I think at this point I would recommend uh, letting it letting it go to the F1 because it's more advantageous. And if the F2B category, be, at the time that the visa is going to become current, you can see which category is progressing more and just opt back into the F2B category in order to get uh, advantage of that beneficial priority date. Okay. All right. We have Erlinda on the phone. Erlinda, kamusta po? Hello. Mabuti naman. Ano pong tanong nyo? Uh, kasi yung regarding dun sa sister ko, mm -hmm. dumating siya kasi dito as tourist pero naglaps na ang kanyang visa. Okay. Uh, she's going to almost 60 years old. Pwede ba, ba siyang mag-file ng kay Obama? Uh, uh, so her sister had a tourist visa but um, overstayed. Is she able to... Well, un under President Obama's executive action, there are a few programs. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some requirements other than having been in the United States for a lengthy period of time. Um, the fact that she's 60 years old, um, that in and of itself is not sufficient to fulfill any of the requirements. And so the main program are really the DACA program for children and the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans. And so the main requirement that she would need to take a look at and see about qualifying is to see if her sister has a child who is either a U.S. citizen oh, okay. or a, anak. Exactly, uh -oh. of, who's either a U.S. citizen or a green card holder. And in addition, that they've been here continuously since January 1 of 2010. All right. Okay, kasama natin si Mati. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. My question is this. Is there any chance na yung mga caregiver uh, can get a working visa? Or what are the requirements, if ever there is? And uh, that's Great a very, good, que very yeah. good question. Because um, as many know, 
caregivers and Philipp many Filipinos serve the function of caregivers mm -hmm. here in the United States. And so just like you pointed out at the beginning of the segment, the employment-based categories for green cards right now are actually a good category to be trying to legalize your status. Mm -hmm. Because historically, the waiting list for that category was a good six, seven, eight years long. Right now, the waiting list is only about a year and a half. Okay. And so individuals um, really should proceed with at least going and getting a consultation to see if they qualify. Right. Um, there, you can go through a sponsorship, but whether you can actually thereafter apply for a green card or not is an individualized assessment that needs to be made. Okay. All right. Magbabalik tayo dito sa kababayan today. Call us at 1-800-553-5724. We're taking your questions here on the show. We'll be right back.